Who is this course for? This is for team leaders, project managers, and DevOps managers to help you fill in the blanks and expose the secrets that work for teams in adopting DevOps culture and methodology. The course focuses on the how versus the what in adapting DevOps to your team. The course is broken into three parts, culture, process, and technology, the three major components that make everything work. It will break down these three crucial components and give you the knowledge technique necessary to affect change in your team and organization. One of my passions in life is helping people figure out how to optimize processes and use technology to automate tasks. Over the years, I've spent hundreds of hours studying the best books on the subject so you don't have to. Here's a list of the most important books I've read in the last 10 years. Books that have shaped my viewpoint and helped me manage and move teams forward. Here's a brief description of the title of the book and the insights I gained from it. Flow. This book is about the state of optimal performance, how sports players take thousands of hours of training to do the impossible, how jazz musicians can just simply play and improvise. It's about being in the optimal state of performance where all the years of practice seem effortless in that state. The Phoenix Project, a novel about IT and DevOps. This teaches us about the three ways, Kanban and Kaizen principles and practices. Another great book is The Lean Startup. This book's about creating minimal viable product, testing and retesting, and pivoting until you get that product right. Now I want to talk about one of my favorite topics, something I spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to get into and out of as fast as I can. Some call it the zone, some call it hyperfocus, being in the groove, and there's many other names for it. The term flow coined by Mihai Chick Sent Me High. Chick Sent Me High described flow as being completely involved in an activity for its own sake. The ego falls away, time flies, Every action, movement, and thought follows inevitably from the previous one. Like playing jazz, your whole being is involved and you're using your skills to the utmost. The trick is to help people in a group achieve this state so you can create group flow where the ego drops off and we achieve levels of performance that seemed impossible. If you've ever been part of a winning team of a hackathon or done any kind of competitive type engineering, I hope you've got a taste of what it is like to see a common vision, share a methodology and architecture to help you build something that wouldn't be possible otherwise. This course is really about trying to achieve that flow state. DevOps flow is a phrase I'm coining here. It includes lean development plus a learning culture and DevOps to create DevOps flow. The first part of the formula is lean development. Lean refers to the agile development techniques like Scrum and Kanban. These have been around enough, long enough for most people in the industry to have heard of them. However, most are familiar with both marginally. Over the years, I've used both of these techniques in operations and I firmly believe Kanban is the better fit and approach than Scrum for operations teams. The core reason it's a lot more flexible than Scrum. It adapts itself to a very interruptive nature of DevOps tasks nicely. One thing to remember is both Scrum and Kanban work best in teams of no more than eight people. This is a common pitfall of using these techniques. If a team is larger than eight, it's best to be broken up into smaller teams. Now let's talk about the second part of the formula, the learning culture. This is the secret weapon, the glue that makes everything work together, the habits and practices of constantly testing and learning and failing fast. We will go over the tenets of a learning culture and how to build it into your organization in a later section. Last but not least, DevOps. There's been a lot said about what DevOps is and what it isn't. Though my experience, I've come to realize that DevOps really is about automating everything. From code commit, to testing, to final configuration and deployment, monitoring, metrics, all into one automated system. All these components together creates DevOps flow. Now we've covered an overview of the DevOps flow and its components, it's time to ask the hard question. 
Why would my organization adopt these practices? Are there any real measurable metrics to showcase the benefits of these practices? Puppet Lab's 2014 DevOps report states the following happens when using DevOps practices and agile development methods. Companies that did this are 2x more likely to exceed profitability, market share, and productivity goals, 50% higher market cap growth over three years, 30x more deployments, 8,000 times faster feature lead times than their non-agile peers. They're twice as successful on customer deployments and 12x faster mean time to recovery with systems and development issues. Application of the principles outlined in this course will make an incredible impact on your organization if applied correctly. Even if your team is not currently practicing these techniques, teams that adapt these practices can achieve impressive results. The biggest pitfall is when teams follow the principles without executive management buy-in at all levels of the organization. This creates bottlenecks in achieving the team's full potential, gives false expectations, and causes missing dates and releases. Getting your management's buy-in is key to achieving success. Okay, let's talk about how we manage projects, work, and issues. We talked about this previously, but let's get some clear definitions. So what is Lean? Lean software development is a translation of lean manufacturing and lean IT principles and practices into software development domain, adapted from the Toyota production system. A pro lean subculture is emerging within the agile community. So what is DevOps? DevOps is a cultural movement of practices that emphasize the collaboration and communication of both software developers and other information technology professionals automating the process of software delivery and infrastructure changes. It aims at establishing a culture and environment where building, testing, releasing software can happen rapidly, frequently, and more reliably. The goal of DevOps is to maximize the predictability, efficiency, security, and maintainability of operational processes. This objective is to support the automation of infrastructure, continuous integration, continuous deployment, and automated testing aka automate all the things. Knowing how to break down the components and how to create feedback loops in the system to help you manage. Okay, time to talk about history. History of DevOps and how it got its title. It's a long story. It started with a talk by Andrew Schaefer and at Agile 2008 conference where Andrew was tired of thinking of supporting and maintaining infrastructure as a separate entity. He had been doing development for a long time and wanted to see if he could manage infrastructure as code. So he put down some thoughts and presented those thoughts in a 2008 Agile conference talk about Agile infrastructure. At the conference, his talk didn't seem to get a lot of interest, so he decided to skip out on his own talk. However, at the time, there was another soul at the conference, Patrick Dubois, that was thinking the same thing. In fact, he was the only person that tried to attend the talk. Patrick tracked down Andrew, and the two started the conversation on how to manage development and operations. Their idea went viral on social media, and since the development operations hashtag was too long, the abbreviation DevOps was born. Fast forward a few years later to a talk given by fellow Yahoo's at Flickr at a Velocity conference. John Aspra and Paul Hammond, they talked about breaking down the silos between dev and operations teams and integrating the two through automation and agile development to create a pipeline of 10 deployments to production a day. This was an unheard of and a game changer in the industry. If you haven't watched this video, I invite you to find it on YouTube. It really shows what's possible when you have a good DevOps team. Next, the start of DevOps days. Paul Hammond was challenged on Twitter to create a DevOps conference. So the first DevOps conference was held in October 2009 in Belgium. DevOps now is starting to gain momentum and starting to change the landscape of IT and operations around the world. What is the big deal about learning organization? Like I said before, DevOps doesn't work without it. Andrew Safer says, a learning organization is one that has the capacity to integrate people and structures in order to move forward towards continuous learning and change. A learning organization not only has the advantage of 
increasing capacity of cultivated talents, but has the advantage of attracting and retaining talent. He also said that learning organization creates an open culture allowing the organization to learn from its mistakes without pointing fingers and really working together. If a company embraces and supports such culture, the business will thrive. Here are a few characteristics that make up a learning culture. And the question is, does your organization practice these? They are continuous learning, an organization's effort to create continuous learning opportunities for all of its members, inquiry and dialogue, an organization's effort to create a culture of questioning, feedback, and experimentation, team learning, spirit of collaboration and collaborative skills, empowerment, encourages feedback and action to address the gap between the current status and the vision, regardless of rank, embedded system, establishes systems to capture and share learning, system connection, an action to connect the organization to its internal and external environments, strategic leadership, the extent to which a leader acts strategically using learning to create change in the company and the marketplace.